internal analysis is an important part of uh, business strategy. We must understand the importance of the internal environment of the company to the formulation of strategy. We must understand the components of the internal environment that need to be studied in the formulation of strategy. And we must understand the use that we can make of models such as the BCG matrix, the value chain and the 7S framework in the formulation of strategy. In framing business strategy, it is very important to understand where we begin from and this understanding comes through conducting the position audit. This audit examines the current state of the business entity. The current state of the business entity is a um, general term which we can elaborate further by talking about the uh, financial situation of the entity, the situation of the entity with regard to the market, the operational situation of the entity, the uh, human resources aspects of the entity, the environmental impact of the entity and the relationship the entity has with the financial community. So these different aspects together would be the state of the entity. We talk about a business organization as a collection of resources. Let's understand what these resources are and what, are, what do these various kinds of resources contribute to the organization. Any business organization would require resources in each one of these areas. Human resources are the basis of the functioning of an organization. Human resources are becoming increasingly important in uh, organizations because of the uh, kind of uh, technological, the kind of uh, change-oriented environment we are moving into. Money is another very important component, very important resource for any organization. Money uh, comes in various forms and money comes in various measures. Money comes with various conditions. So for a business to utilize money properly is very important. The third um, index in looking at um, resources is the production capacity of the uh, company. There are companies which uh, are limited by the capacity that they are able to set up in a particular location. This limitation may come because the size of the location is limited or it may be that the people living in the area around that uh, project do not want the project to expand or it may be because the government has decided that that particular area is now um, diverted to a different kind of use. So this limitation on production capacity right, is an important constraint, is an important resource constraint. If there is a limitation on production capacity, it is an important resource constraint. The distribution network that uh, the company has created 
Now, for instance, if you look at a company like uh, Hindustan Lever, right? Hindustan Lever over the last 50 years in India has created more than a couple of million dealers across the country. This is a huge distribution network which takes a considerable amount of time and effort to create. But most of these dealers are in the urban areas and there are very few of them in the rural areas because till uh, recently uh, the rural area was not a heavily consuming area and uh, if you look at a company like Hindustan Lever um, typically not more than 10% of um, its revenue came from the rural areas. Now the situation has changed significantly. For Hindustan Lever close to 35% of its revenue comes from the uh, rural areas and therefore a distribution network in the rural areas is of prime importance. The kind of distribution network which uh, Hindustan Lever has created in the rural areas is fundamentally different from the uh, distribution network that it has in the uh, urban area. Right? In the rural areas there is uh, a group of uh, individuals called uh, um, Shakti women who create awareness of Hindustan Lever products and ensure that the buyers reach the shops in search of these products. And finally, when we talk about resource constraints, we are talking about the constraint that may exist in data gathering. Now, this varies from company to company because there could be companies where the nature of the business is such that uh, not much data needs to be gathered. Right? Typically, in uh, B2B sales, business to business sales, data gathering is much easier because your customer pool may consist of at most uh, 1000 customers, which would be other companies like yourselves and it is easy to collect data. On the other hand, if uh, we are talking about a consumer organization which produces a, a fast moving consumer good, an FMCG, then we are talking about millions and millions of consumers and in this case data gathering, data assimilation, data analysis could be a major uh, resource constraint within the company. Let's look at uh, how efficiently a resource is used. Right? Efficiency is a combination of two things. It is a combination of effectiveness and economy. What is effectiveness? Effectiveness is the degree to which the goal is achieved. An effective activity is one which achieves the goal of that activity. And what is economy? Economy is the cost incurred in doing this. So efficiency is a combination of effectiveness and economy. Efficiency is achieving the goal in the most optimum manner. 